Hi. So in the previous um, slide, we talked about the failures associated with the wind turbine systems, the material failure as well as the system failures. Now let's talk about the solutions or and the measures that we can take in order to prevent the wind turbine failures. So first of all, remember that we do not have any control over the climate. We do not know if there is going to be another storm in another 50 years in a certain location. However, weather can be pred predicted and simulated. So it typically for several years, the weather is simulated before we find out the perfect design or the optimum design for of the wind turbine for that certain location. However, now we let us also talk about the manufacturing aspects and what are the, where do we have to take care of things when it comes to manufacturing. So first of all, <coughs> we need to optimize the type of fiber, the content of fiber and the orientation of fiber during the manufacturing. What does that mean? The type of fiber, okay, you can select glass fiber, carbon fiber, some of the advanced wind turbines are using a combination of glass and uh, carbon fibers and so on. So that is, let's say that's given to you. However, the second thing is the content of the fiber, the fraction of the fiber in your, in your entire composite material. How does, uh, have you ever thought of how much fiber should be, how many fibers, or what should be the overall volume fraction or weight fraction of the fibers in a composite material? If you have very little fibers, hmm, then you may lose the strength of your structure. Hmm, and you may have a lot of stiff parts. You may also lose the flexibility of your structure. You'll have too much plastic and very little fiber. On the other hand, if you have a lot of fibers and very little resin, then there is nothing to hold these fibers together. You remember that the resin has to be infused as much as possible. Hmm. So there is an optimum fraction of the fibers in your fiber reinforced plastics. So this is very important that not just the type of the fiber, you also find out what is the perfect content of the fiber in your plastic. And of course, lastly, the orientation of the fibers. Hmm. So when we make uh, laminates, you know that we have uh, we have braided fibers. We have the sheets in such that in such that we have direction of the fibers changing on each layer. Hmm. So this is also very important and we need to do it such that the loads that our wind turbine blade is going to experience are evenly distributed. Okay. What we also do, so of course we take care of every possible thing when we manufacture the blades, but of course, even after the manufacturing, once you have the wind, when you have the uh, turbine blades, you have the wind turbine installed, you need to do what is known as the structural health monitoring, which means a continuous monitoring of how the system is behaving, what is the response of the system. So whenever there is even a slight change in the response of the system, there are multiple sensors that are installed on in the wind turbines that will that will tell you what is the change, how much is the change, was the change according to the weather or whatever we expected or there is something for which there is no reason. So such constant monitoring of the, of, of the performance of your system is known as structural health monitoring. Now you can do this when your turbine is in service. Hmm. Of course, for this, you need multiple sensors, as I mentioned, and therefore you also have multiple complex control systems in a wind turbine. Hmm. Yawing system, for example, is an example of a control system. Yawing system will orient or adjust the turbine orientation according to the direction of the wind. It will also sometimes completely shut down, completely stop the blade or completely shut down the entire turbine when there is too much turbulence in the wind, under dangerously high winds, it will completely turn the blades away from the wind. So yawing system is, is responsible. It is a type of control system which is responsible for the direction, the orientation of the winds. Now, at the time of manufacturing, 
although we take care that we have the right fibers and we have the right amount of fibers, we still need to, do, to perform load testing. Now, we also perform dynamic as well as static load testing when the entire, first when the error shells are made and also when they are assembled for the overall assembly, you will do static as well as dynamic load testing. Multiple material inspections. So material inspections, of course, whenever you're making a composite material, for that matter, even when you're making an alloy or any other material, you have to do the inspection if, uh, if it came out right, if you, you are able to make what you wanted to make. And how do we do that? We have different imaging te techniques. We have different characterization techniques. They differ for, for different materials. For composite materials, you have a variety of, of techniques that can be used both at the time of manufacturing and also when the blade is in service. Hmm. So for example, you have uh, acoustic emissions, you have ultrasound, Im ultrasonic imaging, you have um, X-ray based uh, radiography and various uh, laser based optical methods, thermal imaging and so on. So we need to use these methods continuously in order to monitor our structure or if there are any failures in the system. Okay, and of course, one of the most important things, which is probably the primary factor, the first, um, the first and foremost thing that we need to think about is the selection of the right model of the wind. When I say right model, that means the right size, not company, but the right size of the wind turbine hmm. and the right capacity of the wind turbine, because that is dependent on the on the uh, velocity of the winds and also the, the possibility of bad weather or highly turbulent or dangerously high winds. So you have to select the right model or right size of your wind turbine before going into all of this. And one more thing is that whether you want a turbine with a gearbox or without a gearbox, that is also one of the decisions that you need to make. As um, I mentioned in, in the previous lecture, that the turbine with a gearbox, we have a gearbox in order to increase the rotation speed because sometimes the turbine blades can not rotate and the, the speed can be, the RPM can be very slow. So in order to increase the speed, the rotation speed, we have the gearbox. However, in the new turbines, we have just a very large ring of magnets and we do not really require a gearbox um, to increase the speed. Hmm. So you need to select the right wind turbine whether it is with or without the without the gearbox the one without the gearbox is known as the direct drive wind turbine so all the parameters need to be selected carefully the foundation has to be checked multiple times especially if it is an offshore wind turbine all of these factors together will prevent if possible the failure of our wind turbine